Welcome to my channel. I'm Gary Uriawan, and in today's video, I'm going to give you five tips to shoot in lower light situation using micro filters camera. Intro. So in today's video, I will be doing something a little bit different compared to my other videos. I will be using a new camera. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 that's currently recording this video. A new camera and is an upgrade to my older DJI Pocket 2, this guy right here that you've seen a lot on my everyday photography vlogs. By the way, if you want to watch the everyday photography vlogs, uh, please check the link up here and you can watch my vlogs featuring the footage recorded using DJI Pocket 2. Uh, the reason why I'm using the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is because I want to test it and make a review about it in the future. So please subscribe to my channel for that review. And if this camera is doing really great, then it will be replacing my Panasonic Lumix G85 for recording talking heads video like this one. Anyway, today I want to share some tips especially about shooting in lower light situation using micro filters camera. So as some of you guys might already know, if you followed my channel, I'm a heavy micro filters camera system user, especially with the Panasonic GX85 and my Panasonic G85, these two guys right here. And when it comes to micro filters camera system, everybody knows that it has smaller sensor compared to APS-C cameras or even full-frame cameras from Sony, Fuji, Nikon, and Canon as well. So with the smaller sensor, there's always a little bit of compromise when it comes to lower light condition as well as background blur. Today, we're going to talk about how to tackle that low light issue when shooting with micro filters camera. But in today's video, I'm not going to tell you to use fast aperture, prime lens, or to use tripod to shoot in lower light condition. No, 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 no. Everybody already knows about that. What I'm going to give you in this video are practical tips that you can apply so that you can have better result when you are shooting in lower light condition using micro filters camera. First tip is to expose to the right. What that means is that if you are shooting in aperture priority, shutter priority, program or manual mode, try to increase the exposure as much as you can without actually clipping the image or the brightest part of the image. So to do that, you have to be very careful. You have to watch the histogram and make sure that there are no clip data on your image. By exposing to the right, you'll be able to let in more light from your image to hit the sensor of your camera so that you will increase the signal to noise ratio. And what that means is that basically you have more actual signal hitting your sensor rather than just noise produced by your sensor. And that will create cleaner image that will have less noise and ultimately it will make your low light picture better. Next tip to get better low light image using your micro filters camera is to not be afraid to crank up your ISO. So many people were told that if you are using micro filters camera at certain ISO levels, you'll start to have too much noise in your image and your image will become useless. So many people will just abandon the shot altogether. They prefer to not have the shot rather than having a noisy image. I personally think that that is not the correct mentality. A noisy shot is still better than no shot at all. You cannot really recreate that moment. You cannot really go back in time, go back to the past and retake the shot. It's not possible at all. If you miss the shot, then you miss the shot. I rather to not miss the shot by taking the picture using higher ISO in less than ideal condition rather than missing the shot altogether. So yeah, I think this is the correct mentality to have. Shoot with high ISO. Don't worry too much about it. If it's noisy, then just don't think too much about it. And in the next points, I will also share another tips that will definitely help to reduce the noise in high ISO low light situation micro filters images. Next tip is to use 
Denoise software such as Adobe Lightroom Denoise or DxO Puro or Topaz Denoise or whatever that you are comfortable using. I use Adobe Lightroom Denoise and DxO Puro a lot. You can check the video of using Adobe Lightroom Denoise for Micro Fortis picture right here. But basically with this Denoise software, you'll be able to remove the noise as much as you can and preserve the details on your picture and make your picture look so much cleaner, so much better, and so much more polished. I use Adobe Lightroom Denoise and DxO Puro for a few years already for my micro test pictures and I think they really did a great job. They make the noise gone, they preserve the detail, the sharpness, and they just make the picture look so much better in my opinion. I don't really have any problems when it comes to the result. They just look really nice. However, there are a couple of things that you need to know. First is that these softwares, they really take a long time uh, to clean up the noise in your image. They take a few minutes. So it's not really that practical if you have a batch of images that you need to clean up all together. You can only select a few because if you select them all, if you have uh, 20, 50, 100 pictures, it'll take hours to finish the denoising uh, algorithm process. But anyway, we don't always take high ISO, low light pictures all the time. So uh, we don't really need to use this for all of our pictures. Just select a few, the most critical ones, and I think the result will be worth it. Also, you might have to shoot in raw format if you are shooting JPEG. Maybe some of these softwares will not work because they only want to uh, process the raw images to get the maximum amount of detail and to remove the maximum amount of noise. And also these softwares, they are not cheap. If you use the Adobe Lightroom, then you have to pay for the monthly subscription. If you use the DxO Pure Raw, you have to pay for about maybe $100. You have to wait until Thanksgiving or things like that to get special discounts. So you have to keep that in mind. Next tip is to use camera or lens stabilizer for shooting non-moving subjects. Most modern Micro Four Thirds cameras, such as my Panasonic GX85 or my Panasonic G85, they all have in-body image stabilizer to help shoot at lower shutter speed when you are taking pictures. If your subject isn't moving, such as when you're photographing landscape or scenery, then you can get into really low shutter speed handheld without even using tripod. You can get to slow shutter speed such as 10th of a second, 15th of a second, 30th of a second without needing any support for your camera. You can just do it handheld and you can get sharp picture without like blurriness or shakiness caused by movement from your hands because of the in-body stabilizer of your camera. This is particularly helpful if you are using non-stabilized lens and again, if your subject is not moving. If your Micro Four Thirds camera doesn't have in-body image stabilizer, then look for a stabilized lens. Even the kit lens that comes with most Micro Four Thirds cameras, they'll usually have stabilizer. So I don't think you'll have any problem looking for a stabilized lens in your lens collection. Last but not least, another tip to get great low light photos using Micro Four Thirds camera is to use flash when you're photographing moving subject. Using direct flash, especially if you are using the built-in flash that comes with your camera, can be a solution that is not elegant, especially if you are shooting in low light condition with your Micro Four Thirds cameras because the light produced by this kind of flash is really harsh. It's really unflattering for your subjects, especially if you're photographing people. But there are some things that we can do to mitigate those issues. First, if you are using the built-in flash of your camera, you can use like a piece of tissue paper or a thin white paper like this and put it in front of the flash like so. Uh, that will uh, definitely help to reduce the harshness and make the lighting more flattering to your subject. Next thing that you can do if you want to be serious about flash photography is to use a dedicated flash, a dedicated speed light like this that comes on top of your camera 
and with this kind of flash you can bounce it to the ceiling if you are shooting indoor and get a much more flattering result or you can use like modifiers to make the light of this kind of flash even softer uh, by using something like this uh, this is the rope flash bender it comes like this you can attach it to your speed light and it will definitely help to reduce the harshness of the light coming from this flash and make everything look soft and nice and flattering or you can also do off-camera flash photography or strobes i have a video about doing strobes photography photographing my wife you can check out that video right here you can learn more about strobes photography right there but anyway by using flash you'll be able to increase the signal to noise ratio because when you are using flash you are actually creating your own light so the amount of light that is coming into your subject and being bounced back into the camera will be much more compared to just the ambient lighting that will increase the signal to noise ratio even at high iso you still get lower noise when you are using flash so those are all the tips on how to take better pictures in lower light condition using micro voltage camera and that wraps up today's video. I hope that all of the tips have been useful for you. I hope this video is inspiring and helpful and informative. So please comment down below what is your own tip when it comes to photographing in lower light condition using micro photos camera or any camera in that matter. Also, if you have any question, please comment down below as well and I will try my best to answer all of your questions. Also, don't forget to support this channel by liking this video sharing this video and subscribing to my channel down below and if you want to support my channel even further consider using the affiliate links in the description or the super thanks button thank you and see you on the next video goodbye